Welcome back, everyone. I'm Mac, your community manager. Over the years, I've played countless RPGs, and thinking back, it's pretty hard to imagine an RPG setting that doesn't eventually end up in a mine, tunnel, or cave. These environments are the quintessential dungeon, and without them, you may feel your campaign is missing something. Well, you're in luck, my friends. Today, using the tools available in Dungeon Alchemist, I will teach you how to craft your very own. So let's dive into this tutorial with another episode of Give a Damn. Step 1. Map Prep. Create a new map by clicking File, then New Map. Select Digital, then set your preferred map size. For map settings, set Terrain to Grasslands, Elevation to Flat, Vegetation to No Vegetation, Water to No Water, and Room Placement to Water Level. Then click Create to generate the map. Step 2. Paint. Now that your map is generated, let's paint the terrain to match. You want the terrain to feel like a cave, tunnel, or mine, so the current grass isn't ideal. Select the terrain tool in the bottom left of the toolbar, then click the Paint Terrain tab at the panel's top. Set your brush to the maximum size and select your preferred stone brush type. Then paint back and forth until the grassland is changed into a much better suited rock terrain. Step 3. Grid and Saving To enable the building grid, go to File and then Settings. Set the grid toggle to On, and while you're here, choose a color and transparency level to fit your preference. Remember that the grid isn't essential, but it helps you keep track of size of rooms during the build process. This is also an excellent point to save your build. You can do this by clicking File, then Save, or Control S. I recommend saving often so you don't lose your hard work. Step 4. Raising Terrain I find it easier to carve caves and tunnels from a large slab of rock rather than sculpting and shaping them by hand. To help with this, I've devised a method that expedites the process. First, select the Terrain tab from the toolbar, then set the brush size to maximum. Click the Raise Terrain tab now hold left click and slowly drag across the map. Notice the terrain is gently rising. Focus your brush in one spot until the terrain peaks and then flattens out. This is the max height of the terrain. Continue raising the landscape around the entire map until every square is at its peak. Word of warning, this process can take some time, but never fear. I've created several cave templates of varied sizes and raised the entire terrain to its ceiling, saving you tons of time and prep work. You can find the link to download these cave templates in the description below. Step 5. Carving Terrain During this step, I will cover the two methods I use to build caves, tunnels, and mines. First is AI Room Carving. This method will cut the stone into fine squared edges that are optimal for mines or tunnels that appear carved out. Select the Draw Room tool and your preferred room type. Then draw your room shape and generate the room by clicking the check mark. The room will carve cleanly out of the rock surface below. Notice the rock is carved at a slight angle. If you want to flatten the rock to the room wall, select the Terrain tool and click the Raise Terrain tab. As we learned in step four, you can raise the terrain to its peak if you focus the brush on one area long enough. Repeat this process around the room's edges until the rock wall is flattened to your satisfaction. Be warned, this can take some time, but the results are well worth the effort. Reminder, because walls were generated in this process, line of sight and wall data is created when you export to your VTT of choice. The second method is carving by hand. It's ideal for caves and mines with rounded, unpredictable twists and turns, giving a more natural feel. Select the Terrain tool and click the Lower Terrain tab. Set your brush size to the thinner side for small passages and the thicker side for large, open caverns. Next, hold left click and slowly drag across the terrain template to begin carving your passage. Once you have found a height you want for your cave floor, click the Flatten Terrain tab and use it to level out the cave floor slowly. 
using the various tool tabs, you can carve pitfalls, stalagmites, inclines, declines, cliffs, multiple levels, and more. The only limit is your imagination. Carving by hand takes time, but its results can be stunning. Remember that hand-carved caves do not currently export line of sight or wall data. This means you will have to draw these in by hand later in your VTT of choice. Step six, decor. You've carved out your cave, tunnel, or mine, and it's finally time to bring it to life with some decorations. Select the place object tool from the toolbar, then click the object brush tab at the top. Several brushes can fit into this theme. Rocks, mushrooms, cobwebs, ruins, pottery, you get the idea. Object brushes allow you to decorate entire maps in a fraction of the time. But remember, you can always use the object eraser to remove objects in mass if you go overboard. Next, select the place object tab for finer object detailing and use the search bar or the various object category tabs, then locate and place objects to your desired specifications. For mines, I suggest dirt, rocks, pits, forges, tools, tents, scaffolding, boxes, and bags. For caves, I suggest vines, ivy, moss, dirt, pebbles, webs, mushrooms, and rocks. For tunnels, I recommend using the AI room carving method we covered in step five. Remember that these are only my suggestions. Use the objects that fit your design theme best so you end up with a map you and your players are happy with. Step seven, lighting. Use the place object tool and select the lights tab. You can place braziers, lanterns, and candles almost anywhere on your map. Wall lights, however, are a bit trickier. They can only be attached at a fixed height on either a wall you drew in with AI earlier, or if you disable collisions, you can attach them to hand-carved walls, objects such as pillars and scaffolding, or even float them in the air to give a spooky lighting effect. Not only is it fun, but it's a good idea to play with the lighting filters and brightness. Pro tip, if you disable collisions and hide light objects inside other objects, they now appear to glow. After you have set up your various light objects, it's time to set the map lighting. Select the lighting tool from the toolbar. To keep it simple, select the nighttime preset. Or if you want more control, click the expanded light menu button in the top right of the lighting panel. This expands the lighting menu and gives you a few more options, such as light intensity, color filters, and time of day. Map lighting really comes down to preference, and as you can see, a few minor tweaks can drastically change the mood of your setting. I recommend tinkering with this and saving as each new map with the various light themes you enjoy. You should be proud of yourself because we covered a lot today. Please take your hand, raise it, pat yourself on the back because you can now build tunnels, caves, and mines from scratch. If you enjoyed this tutorial or found it informative, please do me a favor, take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe. Lastly, please comment if you have questions about this video or suggestions for future tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, I'm Mac, the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist, and I'll see you next time. I give a damn.